it guys. It's a nice cool winter day in uh, Pennsylvania and uh, today I want to tackle the injectors. So you'll notice I uh, have already installed them. These are uh, Snake, Eater, Snake Eater Performance uh, 1500 cc injectors. Now I installed them in the car. I actually already started it um, it didn't run very well, um, and I think it's probably because the injector data is off. So, what I want to do today, um, so, yeah, I guess I should probably talk about um, my struggle. So I went on Snake Eater Performance's website, and uh, the injector offset they gave was... Uh, I think it was like one one millisecond and I punched that into the computer it, it didn't like it and it didn't really seem right to me anyways because injector offset is normally a, a curve not just a uh, static number so what I want to do today um, is determine that injector data um, via experimentation so, um, I could probably contact Snake Eater Performance and they would probably provide me better data and all that, but um, I kind of like doing it this way better and uh, it'll, it'll be good experience for the future when I have injectors that I don't have data on. So, I guess some of you might be like, uh, what's injector data? <laughs> so, um, usually when people are talking about injector data, they're talking about injector offset. So, injectors aren't perfect, they aren't fast, as fast as electricity. Um, so it takes a certain amount of time from when the computer actually sends the pulse to when the injector actually opens. Now this isn't a, isn't a big issue. Um, your, your computer, most computers are equipped to, uh, well, all computers are equipped to uh, um, compensate. Um, so basically uh, when your computer is commanding a pulse width to your injector it adds this injector offset to inj your injector pulse width and that compensates for your um, lost uh, pulse width. So normally it looks something like this so your injector offset kind of decreases with battery voltage. Um, so yeah, they normally normally it looks something like that. Um, in the case of micro squirt, it's it's literally just a straight line. Uh, that's all the ability they give you. Um, it's usually close enough. Um, but why is injector data um, important? So at idle your pulse width, your total pulse width on your injector is usually around two to three milliseconds. Now say you were 0.3 milliseconds off, that makes a pretty big difference on how much fuel is being flowed. Um, so um, that being said, at wide open throttle, um, when you're at high, higher injector duty cycles, um, I did this calculation just based off of a four-stroke engine at 6,000 RPMs, um, you're going to have injector pulse width of around 18 to 20 milliseconds. So that, that 0.3 that you're off doesn't make as much of a difference. And if you have a good standalone, it will normally compensate. So usually having bad injector data will heavily affect you at idle. So you'll have this real rough idle and it just one idle right. So, how are we going to figure this out? Um, so, I'm an electrical engineer by trade. Um, <laughs> so, I have a little bit of experience uh, with this sort of thing. Um, so, essentially, um, what I'm going to do, I have this benchtop power supply. I made this in high school in my high school electronics class. Uh, thanks, Mr. Syker. Uh, shout out to you. So, essentially, I'm going to vary the voltage that the injectors are seeing, and then 
the micro squirt has this really neat feature called test mode. So if you guys, you guys have never seen this, um, if you go up to here and you go down to injector output test mode, injector spark, you can enable test mode. It allows you to basically test fire your injectors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug all, um, well, six, uh, five of the six injectors and then I'm going to spray fuel, so manually run the uh, fuel pump and then I'm going to use a graduated cylinder to measure the output and that will tell me how much pulse width I'm putting to the injectors and I should see a difference between the theoretical amount it should flow and the amount it does flow um, and that I can use to, to calculate uh, injector offset so I can explain it a little more um, when I'm sitting down at the computer and uh, go through my little spreadsheet and hopefully you guys can use the same data once I'm done uh, going through the test so essentially I'm just gonna go half volt in increments and uh, flow it and see see the difference and that should give me my injector data so wish me luck Good. Seconds, thousand, thousand pulses. Three, three, enter, thousand, enter. Injector one, hopefully it's all, all in output interval. Let's do like. Pump on. We get put the clack in the way. And it's filling with fuel. I can't see it, honestly, but try to get a better. Clacking and it's filling with fuel. So once that's done, we'll see what it comes up with. volts Ew. make sure this before all my fuel evaporates so that was So, 48 cc's, 
so do, 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 48. All right, that's 1.08 milliseconds of dead time, which that's totally reasonable. So I made this little spreadsheet. I'll give you guys uh, a little better uh, idea what this uh, is all about. But I made this spreadsheet. And basically as I fill it in, we'll be able to see my injector dead time. So you can see it on the uh, right there. It's uh, 1.08 milliseconds at 13 volts. So we'll keep going and uh, I'll give you guys the results when I'm done. Alright, so now that we have the right injector data, we can... Uh, plug it into the computer. Now I had to do some funny stuff with the microskirt, um, which I'll get into that later, um, but alright, this is what it should sound like with the right data. Didn't start quite right, but it's a little cold. Okay, so I wanted to go over the spreadsheet that I made. So uh, essentially what I'm doing here is I have battery voltage here in the uh, first column and then I have the volume that I collected during each test and then I have this theoretical fuel volume flowed. So I, I'm taking the uh, advertised injector flow rate and I'm multiplying it by the amount of time that it should be opening if it were to have zero dead time. So that comes out to 75 cc's for every single test because I use the same parameters for each test and then we can take the theoretical minus the uh, volume collected divided by theoretical and then multiply it by my pulse width and that will give me the um, injector dead time. So um, after some digging on the Snake Eater Performance website they actually do provide more uh, in-depth data. So the reason I got confused was if you go to their product catalog and then 1500 cc so under this they just said 0.65 millisecond offset i mean that doesn't really tell me a whole lot but if you go under their technical data we can see some g48 tunes uh, among others um, obviously matt's been here before <laughs> so, um, if we bring up one of those tunes, um, obviously they're going to have injector data, which this actually makes it really nice for us because we can check to see if our data is right. So we can look at one of Matt's tunes, so yeah, there it is, um, and we can see, see how close we got. So, that's this column here and then another test that I did um, basically since microsquirt is uh, only two banks and you have to put your split your six injectors onto three injectors in each bank um, I wanted to see if having more than one injector on an injector driver had any effect on the injector data so my theory is the injector driver have, has to drive more um, more injectors, so it may take longer for a individual injector to open. So I took data for all six injectors, um, three at a time, and then I averaged them. So that's what this column is here, and then. This is the data that I put in the car, we'll get to that later. So here's the results from the single injector on a graph. 
and then here are the results from all six injectors you can see some of them were a little wavy um, yeah I mean it averaged out to something that was reasonable so and then now we're gonna look at a comparison so in the blue we can see the data from the single injector in the red we can see Matt's data you can see they're they're pretty close um, so obviously we did did something right um, and then the yellow is the average from the multiple injectors per uh, injector injector driver so you can see very clearly it is higher than the other data um, so my theory was correct um, and then in green you can see the data that's in the car like I said earlier you can only put in a straight line to micro squirt um, it's usually adequate um, but what's kind of weird here is um, the line doesn't really look anything like the rest of the curves I played around with it whenever the voltage gets high um, it basically it it's not it goes really lean and the car stalls out so I had to uh, make the curve kind of like this um, to get it to run right so I'm not quite sure why that is but it's what the car liked so I, my guess is if we went to a um, to a uh, setup that was a sequential injection um, we could probably put this in data this data in with no problem I mean obviously Matt's having success with it with a stock computer so um, obviously our our results um, with the micro squirt are a little different maybe the uh, maybe the injector drivers having uh, firing all six injectors at the same time perhaps that is causing issues uh, maybe it's too much current who knows um, it it this injector data made the pro made the problem go away so um, perhaps the other thing um, we'll bring this up quick um, it said in the requirements for the injector um, minimum linear pulse width was 2.1 millisecond I never actually checked this but we may have been getting lower than that, so maybe this um, is pushing it up out of that. I'll have to look into that, but regardless, um, the re whole reason I wanted to do this was just to show you guys that we can find the injector data fairly, fairly accurately um, using this method, and um, I, I could definitely see using this in the future you know it, it getting an injector that uh, doesn't have any data and you search and search and search and you're like uh, what am I gonna do and then you know this this method could be used to uh, solve that problem so alright that's where I'm gonna call it today uh, I hope you guys enjoyed um, I thought it was a pretty neat little experiment um, alright see you in the next one